Hi there, welcome to today's masterclass. Um, today we're going to be discussing how to make vehicles and all the fun permutations we can have with those and we're going to try and cross into physics a little bit as well. Um, so, uh, as some people may, may know, we overhauled our vehicle system a couple months back. Um, I think in, in the start of August we really released the, um, the new modular vehicle component. So today we're actually going to be exploring some of the features of that component. Um, I do recommend grabbing the latest editor pack when you're working with vehicles as we've made a number of bug fixes and things in the, the very latest editor packs that are not present in the older ones. Um, for the vehicle components you need to have an editor pack that starts with 10 in front but I do recommend using 10.8 um, or the 10.9 we'll be releasing tomorrow um, which will have a couple more vehicle related bug fixes. Um, special thanks to user Saberjack who helped me diagnose a problem with uh, the hover vehicles. Um, so. Moving on, um, today we are going to uh, build and uh, create a couple of vehicles. I've grabbed a few things off the asset store, um, which we're going to use as models because I, I don't have the time on this um, this, convers this conversation today to actually build a, a full vehicle from scratch in Blender and make it look any good. Um, so we're going to use a couple of asset store models here. Um, the first thing though that I have done is whip together a quick uh, vehicle testing scene. Um, so I do recommend having a scene like this. I'll drop this one into the actual next um, next editor pack sample art directory just for the, the hell of it but um, it's good to have a, a vehicle scene that you can actually drive around with and, and actually observe the, the vehicle under certain scenarios such as crashing into walls that kind of thing. Um, so this one I just whipped together uh, using World Machine which I covered in a previous masterclass. It's fairly straightforward uh, generator list, nothing particularly special about this one but um, uh, you can sort of see the, the rough, rough layout that we built it on, just enough room to drive around and actually get some slopes. Uh, nonetheless, uh, we've imported that all and got ready, uh, so today it's time to get started. So the modular vehicle component, uh, which I'm just going to bring up here, I'm just going to create a new empty game object and attach it in. Uh, we will actually build, start building the first vehicle in just a second, but first things first, the modular vehicle component has a whole bunch of settings attached to it. And the goal with the modular vehicle is actually to build a vehicle that uh, can describe most types of vehicles without you needing to get down and dirty with scripting. Um, if you want to script your own vehicles, you can. All the functionality that the modular vehicle uses is exposed to scripting. There is nothing in here that's uh, not accessible from um, the uh, science-based scripting API. So if you find that there is something in here that you don't particularly like, you want to override, whatever, you are free to, to create your own vehicles um, the long way. But uh, the goal with this particular uh, component, the modular vehicle component, was to sort of shortcut a lot of these problems and actually build a, a usable basic vehicle framework that you could get started with immediately uh, and sort of get straight into, into how things work. Um, so as you can see there's uh, a couple of properties to begin with and then there are these forces. Now the forces are basically how the vehicle behaves physically and you have a lot of options um, that you can tick on to, to do things like how steering works, um, wheels, hover points for flying vehicles, um, boat forces for boats, uh, and so on and so forth. You can also define coefficiency curves for drag. Um, that's particularly useful as you want the vehicle to accelerate to high speed. You want to maintain stability, and to do that you might increase the drag, and you definitely want to increase the angular drag so the vehicle doesn't spin out the moment you crash. While that would be realistic, it's also not very fun. Um, so one of the things you can got is the ability to actually set this on a curve, um, so as you can see here. We start with no drag up to about 2 metres a second, and then by the time you get 21 metres a second, um, you have an angular drag of about 2. Um, these settings I have picked based on my experimentation. I don't know if they're necessarily the best values, but they should be sane defaults um, that you can use when building your vehicles. Um, so there are going to be three types of vehicles I'm going to try and cover off today. Um, the first will be a uh, plane-driven vehicle with wheels. Um, I will then build a hover tank. And then finally, I'm going to take a, a shot at building a, um, a plane. Now, I haven't actually done too much experimenting with planes here. I feel like there's probably a few more features we need to add to the modular vehicle script to really get um, aeroplanes and that sort of vehicle working, working nicely. But um, for the basics, we do have um, ground and hover vehicles working just fine. Um, I have tested both of those. So we're going to start with uh, a ground vehicle. And I'm going to go grab um, the same vehicle I used for the... Um, Summer Festival. This one was grabbed off the asset store. It's just called Buggy. Uh, I think it's called Buggy One on the asset store. If if you're hunting for it, um, and as you can see here, this is just a simple, simple June buggy. Um, now I may need to go grab some sound effects. And I've realised in, in hindsight, I haven't actually uh, 
prepared with that, so I will we'll take a note to do that at some point uh, during this tutorial when we get up to that step. So the important thing about this vehicle is that the wheels are separated, and that is important if you want to actually have steering and things reflected on the, on the vehicle itself. Um, if the vehicle is just one single mesh object, then it's not really going to be very useful as far as sort of showing visual representations of what's going on. Um, things like the suspension, the angle of the wheels, wheels turning, all that can actually be represented um, on these models using the modular vehicle component. So there's no real good reason not to use that if you can avoid it. Um, the other thing worth thinking about and playing with is um, physical joints. And actually, I'll, I'll try and cover that with this tutorial because someone did ask me um, earlier in the week about using physical joints and setting those up. So to begin with, we're going to make a couple, do a couple of things. First, we're going to make sure the uh, mesh has a collider. Uh, and that means that it's got something that can represent it physically. So I'm just going to grab the, the base body and I'm going to just hunt through here to see if I can uh, find this. It's you? Yes, it is you. Okay, so conveniently that's on the route. So we're just going to add a mesh collider to this one. Now we could use a combination of other colliders if we wanted to, um, but for simplicity, um, and this is how I did it before, I just set it up as a convex mesh. Now, there is a reason you want to consider using convex meshes instead of the default mesh collider. And that reason is that um, the non-convex, the concave supported uh, mesh collider, which is the opposite of the convex ones, um, they tend to be pretty slow. And that's not usually a problem, but if you have a very complicated mesh object and you collide it with another vehicle that is also a very complicated mesh object, um, you will introduce lag. Um, so it's best to just use the convex colliders because uh, they do, generally speaking, fit the model. And they fit the model fairly accurately. Uh, if it's a, a vehicle like this one, mileage may vary but uh, generally speaking it's not too bad um, and all, they're also significantly faster to compute so you'll get more reliable physics uh, and you won't get so much lag if uh, a really complicated mesh collides with another one because really it's only this simplified shell that's in, being collided. Um, now uh, there is a couple of other things we need to do. Uh, the next one is we need to add the modular vehicle component. Now this should be on the root object. Uh, it doesn't matter if the, the colliders are not on the root, that's fine. Um, but the modular vehicle does need to be on the root of the model. So we'll just grab the modular vehicle script and it'll add a rigid body component as well automatically. Now, so if you're not familiar with uh, the rigid body component, um, the rigid body component basically is what defines something as being interacting with the physics system. Um, so it defines sort of something that has velocity, mass, um, angular, momentum, all those kinds of things and it'll simulate it as it goes through. So when something's got the rigid body on it, it's treated as a dynamic object in the physics system. Um, objects without rigid bodies attached can't be moved by physics. So if we make a ball later, we can actually have the ball get hit by the, um, the car and move along, and that'll just use another rigid body as the basics. Um, now there's a few things we want to change here. First is the mass. Uh, now the mass also actually, we don't need to change that one specifically because the modular vehicle does have its own property there as well and it'll actually set the rigid body one for us. We don't need to worry about that one too much. Um, drag, uh, again, will be overridden by these um, these settings down here so you don't need to worry about that either. Um, but the ones you do want to consider using are one, use gravity. That's usually something you want on. It's not necessarily true, but uh, generally speaking it is. Um, now, is kinematic. Now, this one's up to you whether you use it or not uh, as the default. If you leave this one ticked when you've got a vehicle, the vehicle will not move until the pl first player gets into it. If it's unticked, the vehicle could potentially roll down a hill. It won't be treated as, as physical. Um, sorry, it will be treated as physical immediately. As soon as the, um, the player actually spawns the item, it'll interact with the world, whereas if it's unticked, it won't interact with the world until the player gets in. Um, generally speaking, I find leaving it off is, um, sorry, leaving it on is the smart option. That means it's not going to be interactive um, or not going to be physical until you actually get in it. Um, just for convenience for the players, I find that's a lot easier to work with because if you do spawn it on a hill, you don't want your vehicle running off and then you have to make another one, um, which adds to, <laughs> adds to user stress. Um, so the next settings, these two are important. Uh, this is the interpolate and collision detection. Now for vehicles, vehicles are high speed moving objects. Um, with most physics engines, I'll give you the, the very brief primer. Uh, we're gonna do it with cubes. So I've got cube one and cube two. Now, if cube moves, uh, moves, it'll mo move at a frame rate. So the physics engine by default runs at 15 frames a second, but when there are vehicles active in the scene, it bumps up to 60 frames a second. So we spend a bit more CPU time um, on things. But if an object is fast moving and it moves, say, from here to here in one frame and here to here in another frame, what may happen is the object may pop out the other side, um, or it may even just teleport straight through the object. And that's because it's basically checking whether there's a collision, and then if there is a collision, it'll 
treat and calculate what had happened with that collision. Um, now, by default, it'll do it that way. However, what we can do is we can actually set the interpolation to interpolate, and now it'll actually interpolate the between frames a little bit. Um, so it can be useful. Also, it uh, will backport things back to the um, the update events, which means the renderer will get updated information about the position of the vehicle and it won't uh, stutter, which can happen if you've got that off. So first thing first, make sure you've got interpolate set. Uh, you can use either interpolate or extrapolate. There are certain advantages and disadvantages to each. Uh, Unity manual is the place to look this up if, you, if you're curious. Incidentally, if you've ever wondered what that little button, that blue button next to the um, each component that Unity have built is, uh, that one actually opens up the Unity manual for the component uh, you've got. So, uh, you click it on, so that actually can be a useful thing if you're ever curious about what a setting is, just click that button, it'll give you all the information. Now the next one is this, this is the most important one, this actually has to do with that front sort of frame rate thing, and that's the uh, collision detection. So when it's discrete, it'll check discrete frames one by one. Um, now there's two options here, there's continuous, and if you do continuous, it will basically calculate it like that, so it'll do subframes between it and, and uh, get quite a smooth result. And that means the object shouldn't teleport through something unless it's moving very, very quickly. Um, the other option is continuous dynamic, and that actually improves the, the sort of effective frame rate. So if you've got a really high speed moving object, like a, a vehicle, it's probably the best option. Now, it does have a, a small performance cost, but it's worth paying for the uh, for vehicles. So I always just tick those two on. So settings you want to look at, uh, tick is kinematic, you want to check interpolate is on, and you'll put collision detection to something other than discrete. And that is the basics of the rigid body. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually set this up as a car vehicle. And to do that, um, we have a couple of things to play with. The core forces, uh, which we're going to skip over for the vehicle, um, for this type of vehicle, we'll go into it to the next kind. Core forces are basically physics that uh, get teleported onto the object. Um, that is to say they've got no source. Uh, they don't actually come from the physics engine. They come externally, and uh, the physics engine uh, is told that this object is moving now. Um, they're useful for things like, for instance, UFOs, hover vehicles and things that don't actually have any real-world um, force equivalent. They sort of just magically move forward and back. Um, so the core forces let you actually input these things. And what you'll find is there's a bunch of tick boxes. The tick box says whether that key is active. So in this case, that would be the forward arrow or the W key or a gamepad. It would be pushing the gamepad forward. Um, that means that 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 force is active when bound to that button, and then you can actually put a, a, um, a direction vector in there and see how what force will be applied. Now that will be mass affected, um, so you do need to increase the values if your mass is high, so you might end up needing to use several thousand values if you need to. Um, there are other ones, the constant force basically just happens permanently. Um, the stability correction, that will keep the vehicle upright. Generally speaking, with cars, you don't need to worry about that so much anymore. The older vehicle system, you did need to worry about this setting, but I usually leave it off because it's actually not necessary anymore. Um, finally, you've got braking forces. Um, the speed force is for aeroplanes. Uh, we'll come to that in the third part. Rotational forces basically give us left and right um, torque, depending on whether uh, A or D is pressed or the arrow keys, left or right. Uh, so on and so forth through each of them. If you mouse over them, you should actually get some um, some tooltips on here as well. Finally, there's the wind zone forces. Um, this one is not actually yet implemented, but it will be coming at some point soon. And that's mainly aimed for people who are building sailing boats and that kind of thing, just to get some input forces from, from those. Um, the one we do care about for this vehicle, though, is the wheels. Now, I'm just going to put one in here. Uh, just put size one, that basically tells us how many wheels we've got. We can have up to 20 wheels attached to an individual vehicle. Um, more than that, and the, the subsequent vehicles will be ignored. Um, they may be supported in a future update, but uh, for now you can only attach 20, 20 individual wheels to a single single vehicle. Um, now, on here we've got a whole bunch of parameters, such as the, the torque of the motor, but before we get to that point, the first thing we need to do is assign a, a, vehicle to, uh, sorry, a wheel to it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create at this position, we're going to create a physical wheel, and I'm going to create, uh, create an empty child. I'm going to move it back to the parent in a second. Um, so I've just grabbed, I w childed it to the actual game object I was looking for, and we're just going to call this one. This is actually going to be, um, call this front, fr oh, front right wheel collider. Okay, now we're going to do the same for the other ones as well. So I go front left. I'm just going to do this all now because I can select them add the, add the component at once. This one's the front front left wheel, and back right, and back left a second, child. Back right wheel collider. 
And the reason I'm just placing them like this um, is because it'll get the position automatically. So if we set this to zero, 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 whatever, we can actually get the, the position added. So this is the back left. So we don't need to manually position all these wheels because it could take a bit of time if we're, oops, uh, if we're doing that. Okay. So now we notice that uh, we've got the positions all right. Uh, this should be um, blue arrow should point forward, just as a general reference. Green arrow should point up. Um, so we've got all these little uh, wheel colliders here, and we're actually going to add a wheel collider component to it. So it's wheel collider. This is a Unity component, and what you'll see here is that immediately we've got these um, these little uh, green circles appearing, and that actually actually is a representation of how the physics engine is seeing the wheel. Um, the little sphere at the bottom is the contact point. That is where it expects to touch the ground. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to resize these a little bit just to make sure they match the, the wheel itself. So I'm just going to bounce these up a little bit. And there's a little bit of guesswork involved in this and the radius on these is a bit too big. Uh, so I'll just set the radius down to maybe 0.45. I'm just trying to eyeball this one. It's a little bit of a process. It can be four. Okay, that's pretty close to accurate. Um, it doesn't need to be 100% precise, but uh, the better you can get it, the, um, the more realistic your vehicle will look. Okay, so the next thing we've got on here is a little um, orange bar. That is actually the suspension, and you can see the green bar across the middle, and that means that this circle will move up or down so that the green bar is between these two values. And we can control that with the suspension distance, and we can also set the, um, the suspension spring. We can set how powerful it is. We can also change the target position, uh, which, as you see, if I do this, uh, is actually def the target position the suspension will try and hit. Um, so we'll just leave this in the center for now, but uh, we might come back to that in a minute. Um, so that's the first thing we've got done, um, is the wheel collider. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start rigging this up. Um, so I'm just going to rig up one wheel, and then what I'll do is I'll hit four, and it'll actually copy all the settings from the first wheel we do. So we're just going to grab the back left wheel collider. That's our first first wheel collider. So we just drop that in the wheel collider. And then we find the back left uh, wheel. And we just drop that in the, the wheel visual transform. And that means that's the object that will be treated visually as the wheel. Um, so it'll get rotated. Um, it'll use the information from the wheel collider to position the visual transform. So do keep them closely aligned because the uh, wheel will be moved to the position of the wheel collider as it moves through the physics system. Um, so we've done that. Now we're just going to set up some motors. Now this is a going to be a um, rear wheel drive car. Um, there are some advantages and disadvantages to each. So we're actually going to set these motors up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the forward torque. Um, we will need to play with these settings to sort of get some realistic torque values here. But for starters, I'm going to set this to 800. I'm not sure if this is fast enough or slow enough. We'll have to play with it in a minute to find out. We'll have to get the vehicle set up first. Um, when you're going in reverse, it's going to go a bit slower. We're going to give it a torque of 300. Uh, this force, incidentally, is in Newton meters. Uh, so if you actually want to go look up the weight of a vehicle, set it to the mass um, divided by the volume. Uh, mass is, incidentally, it's actually realistic, realistically should be called density, not mass, uh, because it does actually represent the density of the vehicle. And the size of the colliders will impact with the mass. Um, so you, if you go look up the values from an actual car, you should be able to get somewhat realistic results. Uh, that said though, um, the results uh, in game cars is not at all realistic. Um, generally speaking, what you find is that um, the center of gra gravity has been moved under the ground. We're actually doing that as well a little bit here. Um, and they do a number of other things to actually can keep the car stable. Um, if you don't do these things, then you'll actually find that while the car is realistic, it'll also crash at a moment's notice. It'll spin out of control, all those sorts of things, which is actually realistic, but not uh, appropriate for, the, for uh, most uses because it's simply not fun. Uh, the next things we're going to do is we're just going to set up a brake. Um, we're going to set the brake to 2000. So this is the amount of torque it's going to apply to slow the vehicle, uh, wheel down when the brake is hit. And we're also going to give it an idle brake. And the idle brake is basically what happens when you've got no keys pressed. So if you leave all your keys off, and this is so the car will come to a stop um, if you release your keys. Otherwise, it might keep rolling down a hill or something else. And again, not fun. So um, we'll do that. Now, the steering, we're not going to steer with the back wheels. Uh, so we'll skip that until we get to the front wheels. But um, I think we've got the... The rest here. Now we've got a few options here in terms of um, effects. Um, so if you looked at this vehicle in the summer festival when I, I first made it, you'll notice that it actually had a trail render attached to it. And what we did is I can show you a trail render very basically. Uh, so I'll set that there. 
this will be nice and pink, but uh, a trail render basically is this. As the trail moves, we'll paint a nice little pattern um, that'll always look at you. Now, to get a nice looking tread, if you want to use this for trail renderers inside the vehicle system, uh, you can actually set it so that the tire tracks will leave tracks as the vehicle is braking, um, or otherwise the, the wheel is under stress. Um, and you can do that with the alignment, you set that to local, uh, and then you can actually rotate it. Um, you can use the, the rotation tools to uh, set that one up. I think this might be, need to be 90, and that might need to be 180, I think. I'm just trying to remember what the, what the values are that you actually get the... Yep. Um, I have to sort of play with this one a little bit to, to figure out, so I've got that aligned wrong, but we can fix that. How have we got aligned now? There we go. So 90, 0, 0. That's the, the alignment you want to use if you're um, aiming for something that will roll along the ground. Um, that will also roll around along the ground as it moves up and down. So as you can see here, that it'll still still cover when you actually drive up a hill. Um, so that is the basics of a of a trail renderer. Um, now if you want to use these on your vehicles, what I suggest doing is attaching it to the uh, collider, uh, near the collider. Actually I've positioned these manually on my vehicle, but uh, I'll just grab here. This is back left is over here, so I'll just grab this position first. I'll just copy the component. Uh, then where's my trail? Paste it onto there. Now I've got it in sort of the position, but we're just going to move this down to the contact point, so it's now aligned. So now it'll actually drag backwards behind it when it's enabled. Uh, we need a, um, a tracks for here, a tire tracks. Now we could go get a tire tracks uh, texture, but I'm just going to be really cheap here and just use a, a simple simple one. So tire tracks. I don't think I've got any in my project. I probably don't. Yes. Okay. So I'm just going to grab the default particle. I'm going to do something dodgy. Um, so to do that, I'm just going to change the shader first to the multiply, uh, and I shall set to particles alpha blended and then change the color to black. It's going to be a, a somewhat of a smudgy, smudgy trail. Um, I'll just do a test. My rotation got knocked off, that would explain that. Um, and we'll just set this to the tire tracks. Um, which should be under the materials there. Okay, so now we've got our, our tire tracks. Um, which is not showing quite right yet. Do I have this upside down? It's quite possible. Yes, I do. Okay, so now we've got our, our very smudgy particle texture. I'm just going to change the material to be darker. Um, I may even look at moving it back to the standard shader just with this texture and then uh, set it to clip or something. Oh, I've got it upside down. Helps. Helps if we get these alignments right. Okay. So this is going to be a very dodgy tire texture. In fact, I can probably change that back to the particles now. Particles are blended. Okay, um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the tiling to uh, zero and just move the offset to 0.5. Now you probably do want to set up a proper tire texture, but that'll that'll do for our, our very very basic um, basic tracks. Okay, so somewhere in the middle there. Okay, that's number one, and now let's go back to our. So this will be back left trail. And we'll make a back right one just for the sake of it. I could do this with front wheels as well, and I did do that before, but I won't do it here. Let's go back right. Now, uh, we do have sound effects as well. I probably won't go hunting for them, because I think it would be a bit of a distraction, but if you do want to attach sound effects to your vehicle, um, it's fairly simple to do. You can also control the pitch. Um, that may be worth showing off. Uh, I don't know if I've, what I've got in this project. I do not... Um, just trying to pick, I, can, I can grab one quickly. Um, okay, I'm, I may come back to that one in a minute because I think it, that's worth showing. You've also got to start and stop sounds as well for your vehicle, but uh, we're just going to go back to the, the wheel and we'll just go down to our trail render and we'll just attach the... This is the back left wheel, so we'll attach the back left trail to the uh, skid trail. 
and this skid this now means that this this trail render will get turned on um, when it's skidding and we'll set the skid threshold I think we need to set this to about 0.2 uh, from memory um, we can also attach a particle system um, and the particle system will basically show dust um, so if we do this we'll just create a blank particle system I'll just align it to here um, this is not a very pretty particle system but I'll set this to um, okay so we'll set the shape um, so that it angles a little bit up okay we'll set uh, we'll make this a bit, bit more interesting um, we'll set the size over time uh, we have a size over lifetime there we go so this to go up to this is probably not the, the prettiest effect, but uh, I'll make it interesting at least. Um, we'll set that to come off there, and we'll just give it a, a noise as well, just so it sort of comes. In. And finally, we'll just do a color over lifetime between all of these settings, we should get something that's kind of okay. Okay, uh, final, final thing, we'll just set the color. point is going to be very thin. If this reminds you from old Mario Kart 64, uh, I think they did something very similar. Um, okay. I'll make you a little bit bigger. Okay, that's our back left uh, particle. make a back row as well. So we've got a few things going on here, but uh, it should, should at least make, make things interesting. Um, so the emission pr property on this gets switched on and off with the vehicle uh, based on the distance, I believe. I'll just double check this one. Okay. Uh, oh no, so it's the emission amount gets changed. So back left for here goes to the particle system. Um, oops, that's like the right one. Back left to particle. And what emission do we have there? We've got the emission of 15, so we'll just set that to zero. That way it's got no persistent particles, and the emission on this one will set to zero. We now know they're going to go to 15. So we're almost done. We'll just go to the front wheels, and then we're, we're just about done. So we'll set the, the, uh, the skid particle emission is going to be set to 15, and we'll set the emission time to 0 0.01. Actually, that was going to be one second. We'll make it go a bit faster, in fact. So that's 0.2. So that means it'll emit 15 particles every 200 milliseconds. Uh, that'll be the rate it tries to maintain. While you're, um, finally, there's also uh, skid sound. So if you want to attach a sound effect for while skidding is happening, um, it should be a looped audio source. Um, the looped audio source will play while the, the skidding is going on. You can set a few things on how quickly the, the volume will ramp up and down, um, that kind of thing through here. I'll leave, leave this one for you guys to play with because uh, I'm not going to get stuck too much on a diversionary track. So we'll set the size to 2 now. Uh, actually we'll set the size to 3 because we'll come back to the third one in a second. Okay so I'm just going to swap some uh, colliders around. So this second vi second wheel it's exactly the same as the first. Um, so we'll just set the... this one will be back right wheel. Uh, um, find it. Back right. And back right wheel collider. Finally, we'll just do the back right uh, trail and the back right particle. Okay, uh, so we have uh, that vehicle, uh, that wheel now. We'll just do one of the front wheels. The front wheels are slightly going to be different. We're not going to have them powered, so we'll just untick those two. Um, we'll give them a break, too. Um, no harm in that one. And we'll set the minimum angle to minus 15 degrees and the maximum angle to 15 degrees. And we'll set the steer turn speed to... Uh, this will be in degrees per second, um, so you want it fairly quick, but uh, it's 
for keyboard users you want to come in kind of slower than you do for people using controllers controllers give you the ability to actually choose how much you're moving left or right whereas keyboards you can only choose you are on turning left or turning right um, so that's what this steer turn speed is for so we'll set this to 60 i think and um, that means it'll move the full range in point 0.25 seconds or 250 milliseconds. That might be even too fast. So I'll set this to 30. So it'll take half a second um, to move the um, from center to left or right. Um, when no left or right key is set, it'll actually shift back towards zero. Um, okay, so that's it. first thing, and we'll just set the wheels up again. So this is going to be front right wheel collider, and we'll do front right. Um, oops. Front right wheel, and we'll just un remove these. Uh, particle systems and things because they're not not in use. Okay, that's those ones. And finally, I'm just going to set four. That's just going to copy the last value. So now I've got this one, the front right one, and we'll just set the front left. Set the front left, and I think that's it. Okay, so our vehicle is almost drivable. Um, there is one other thing we want to do. Uh, so I'll just delete these cubes. And that is set up a camera for it. Um, I'll just go to check the other settings. So we've got a few things like the drag. We won't play with these yet. We will in a minute. But um, first things first, we're just going to set a, um, a seat route. And this is basically where the, the player will sit. Um, if you don't set one, it'll, the player will sit in the middle of the, the vehicle. Um, which is probably okay, but it's not quite right here. So we'll just set the, the player so it sits there. Uh, we'll call this seat. We'll just drop seat into the seat root, and finally we've got a right animation. I think I've got a seat. A sit pose. Hopefully I've got one. Seat maybe. Uh, don't know what I've got in the way of, of seats. We might have a, a very odd animation. Uh, seat or sit. What are you? No, you're not a human. Okay, so I'll just grab an idle animation. This is going to be a very very dodgy, uh, dodgy looking. Uh, person you can actually rotate it at least um i think that was my fly idle that was the one we're using there okay so what you could actually do if you, you don't have it quite you can actually rotate it a little bit back so we'll rotate this so that the um my axis is a little bit back i don't know exactly how this is look but we'll find out in a second uh that's everything we do need to do now is for the vehicle to go to uh, work normally is set, but the last thing you want to do is probably set a camera. And now, if you've used Sin Machine um, th before, then you'll be right at home. Um, basically, we use Sin Machine cameras here because it gives you a lot of power in terms of how the the, uh, the vehicle's camera should behave. So I'm just going to create an empty child here. I'm going to set it to uh, there. I'm just going to add a virtual camera. Now this uh, says that it's a Sin Machine virtual camera. I'm going to set the lookout target. Uh, we're going to set it to the buggy. Uh, we'll set the follow to the buggy. Okay. Um, then, and what I'll do is I'll just add a Sim Machine Brain so we can preview this. Sim Machine Brain, okay, great. Now we've got the, the virtual camera in place. So this is our virtual camera. We're just going to set the, the aim to Composer. And when you see it in game view, you can sort of see how it's looking. And that means that if the the vehicle is within this black zone the camera won't try and reorient itself but if it's in that blue zone it'll try and shift towards the nearest point of the black zone and find the red zone if it if the camera crosses into there uh, that is to say it keeps the, the camera in the center of the screen so what we'll do is first is we'll just set the um the transposer and this will all make much more sense so here we go now you can see that the vehicle's kept in the center we'll just uh, add a little bit of offset to the the y not too much because we want this back now we can move the camera forward or back uh, generally speaking, back is better with vehicles. Um, we keep the camera 3.4 meters behind the player when it's in um, the normal camera mode, but when you're in the in uh, vehicles, you actually want to be able to see the distance. And that means not having the camera too much too high up because you do want to see this stuff. In fact, it can, I dare say we might move it a bit closer and just try to see if we can get a um, a nice nice usable drivable camera here. And we'll just move the, some of these alignments. So I'll just grab. Some of these. I'm going to keep it there and I'm going to move you. Move you down like that. And we'll just set the hard zone at the bottom. Set that to 5 so it's even. Uh, let's find its own height. Um. Okay. 
So now we've got a, a, a camera that should be okay. And we can change a few things like the damping and whatever, but um, we're just going to leave that all all as is. And finally, we'll add a bit of noise. Uh, this is basically the equivalent of shake cam, since everyone's popularized that. Uh, we'll just grab a, a basic, basic mild handheld camera. And that'll bounce the camera around a little bit as it moves. Um, makes things a little bit more realistic. Um, other than that, I think everything is all good. Um, we can change with the field of view and things if we want, but uh, we'll just leave that at 40. Okay, that is our camera. And finally, the last thing we need to do is set a priority. Now, the default priority is 10. Because um, we want this to override every other possible camera, we're just going to set this up to 10,000. Um, that's the priority I typically use for sh um, our own systems should not interfere with it. Um, none of our, our sin machines sin machine cameras that we use internally go that high um, so by setting it there you can always ensure that it, it runs over the top um, so we just drop the, the virtual camera in the primary camera slot um, we've left room here for secondary cameras that could be like reverse cameras other kinds of cameras we haven't added a hotkey for it yet but at some point in the future we will add the ability to switch between cameras that are added to a virtual uh, to a modular vehicle um, so uh, we have all of this set up I'm just going to untick this and I'm just going to delete my main camera. Uh, and finally, I'm going to hit play. I'm just going to save my scene, add a landmark. And we are good to go. This will just take a second. The first time, obviously, when you hit play in a while, it, it does take a second to spin up and, and grab everything it needs to do. Um, okay, here we go. vehicle. Oh, we've made mistakes already. <laughs> so something on here is causing the wheels to bounce. That's our, our first uh, first clue that something is wrong. Um, I don't know where our, our vehicle is, but um, what I'm clearly saying is that the moment it touches the ground, it's, it's bouncing. So I think that the uh, nature of that one is that the wheel collider is a little bit uh, um, springy. It's got a uh, suspension spring of um, 3,500. I'm just going to knock that down a little bit and see what happens. Just going to hit play. Resume. The good thing about this is we can actually um, pause this in, in real time. Uh, unfortunately, I think I've just bounced out of my <laughs> test scene. Oh no! Uh, just taking. We got very, 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 very high up. Um, yep. Okay, this is, this is definitely in the, the unwanted territory. So we'll just uh, play with a few things. I'll just set the, the mass of the vehicle, of the wheel. I might set that to one. I'll just uh, grab this one again. I'm just going to move this guy a little bit up as well, just to make sure that the collider is not on the ground. Um, when you spawn a vehicle from the inventory, it will actually spawn a little bit above the ground by default as well. Um, it just gives it a chance to actually naturally rest. This is the fun part of my office hours, where we, in mean my master classes, where we get things a little bit, uh, a little bit off. Okay, so again, we've got the velocities a bit high. Um, Let's just have a look at what happens here. So, here we go. We've got our vehicle. It's just going to step forward a couple of frames and see what happens. This is the, the moment where, <laughs> where our intrepid explorer is going to hit the ground and then something is going to happen. So it's fine until it hits the, ve the wheel. So it's definitely on the on the bounce there, so we're just going to play with these wheel colliders a little bit more. Um, and I'll just try and set the mass to a thousand and see what happens there. Okay, that's getting better. Whoop, maybe not. Um, I'm just going to quickly pull up. I did actually work out the, the correct settings for this one, so just give me one second because um, I'm going to go grab. Uh, my mod <laughs> modular vehicle from another project and just uh, quickly look at the uh, the settings on the wheel because I will get the, the correct uh, mass and radius and other, other settings for it. Um, have this modular vehicle. 
cool. Sorry, I'm just doing this on another PC quickly so I can, I can get the values. This is the exact same vehicle I've rigged up before. Um, okay, here we go. So I have, let's copy all these settings. So the mass I have set to 20. Set the radius to 0.42. Your damping rate, it's all fine, zero, zero, zero. It's all normal. Okay, that's those ones. Let's take a look at the, uh, the base vehicle and see if there's anything else that I've, I've missed. I've probably set the um, the mass up a bit as well. Um, I've left the mass there at 1500. It shouldn't make a difference, but I'll just set that there as well. Okay. And that should be it. There's a little bit of trial and error involved in this. Uh, yes, I did say the spring went reverted back. That's fine. I had looked at my other one, and it's it's also a 3500. Um, it's should be okay. Hey, here we go. So the the key change I made there was set the the mass to 1500 on the rigid body. Um, that seems to be what made the difference. I guess it presumably did not initialize with um, the correct mass value. But here we go. We have our vehicle. Now it's a little bit slow. Um, whoop. And it's also a bit slippery, but uh, that slippery values we can actually change on the wheel collider. There is a, an, uh, a slip value you can mess with, um, but as you can see, this is probably not fast enough to make a proper jump yet. But hey, that's that's our basic vehicle setup. Um, so, uh, that is um, basically what you need to make a drivable vehicle. Now, this is a little bit slow, so what we can actually do, there's a couple of things we can play with. First is the velocity drag. We can reduce the, the drag as it increases, but um, what we can also do is just change the torque. Um, so in here I've got the torque set to... Uh, it's on the back wheels. We've got the torque set to 800. I'm just going to set this to 2800. This might be a bit obscene, but uh, again, let's find out. Just make sure it's always symmetrical, because if you <laughs> don't have symmetrical, you'll drive out. Okay. So here we go. And as you can see, you'll notice that the, the drag values will increase the faster we get, and that's because it's following the... the um, the curve we've got down set there. Okay. So now you can see actually as we as we hit sideways the um, the particles and the the uh, trail is actually appearing. I need to get a little bit faster. Let's go for oh. let's get this driving up to speed. And now, if you can see, when we can pause, this is why I'm holding on space bar to break, uh, we have our little trail renderers appearing as well. So, that is our first type of vehicle. Um, I don't know if we're going to get time to go through all three today, but uh, we can move on to our next one. Um, so, I'm going to save this guy. Uh, that is the basics of setting up your first, first type of vehicle. And move on to the next. Now, so the next one I was going to do today is a, uh, a hover tank. And for this one, I'm just going to play with the, the hover setting. So it's almost the same as the first one, but uh, we do have a couple more settings to tune here. Um, so I'll just grab it. Oh, I forget what it's called. It was, um, it was tank something. There we go. Anti-grab tank. Um, I'll just grab the prefab that we've got here. Let's grab it. Here we go. Here is our hover tank. Really nice big vehicle um, and this one we're gonna actually make glide over the terrain uh, so it's gonna look and behave as it should I'm just gonna play with the lighting a little bit in here because it's a bit dark um, so I'm just gonna set the, the ambient to a somewhat brighter brighter value okay, and where's the directional light um, yeah that'll be fine okay so, uh, for this guy, he's got a couple of things. One, he's got a separate turret that we could actually sort of rig to, to follow. If I've got enough time, I'll try and script that one very, very, very quickly. Uh, but for the basics, again, we're going to start. First things first, modular vehicle. Oop, that's the wrong one. It's a modular buoyancy, which is for boats. Um, modular vehicle. All right, I'm going to set the mass to this guy because he's going to be quite big to 3,000. Probably it needs to be higher, but um, we'll, we'll play around with that in a minute. Uh, collision, interpolate, continuous dynamic, is kinematic. 
Um, you don't need to worry about the collisions too much with these kinds of vehicles because they don't tend to hit things as much, um, just because the by nature of the fact that they hover on the, off the ground. Um, they still can run into walls though. Um, okay, hover points. We're going to set this one to have six hover points. Now, hover points on hover vehicles, I'll just start with one actually. Again, same as before. Hover points indicate um, basically where the vehicle hovers from. So, where the, um, the force is being emitted from. Uh, you want to try and balance them symmetrically because if you don't balance them symmetrically then the, the vehicle may tilt in one particular direction or another. There is a bit of an art to setting these guys up, um, but we'll start with the basics. We'll call this hover point. So you start by adding an empty child to the object um, and you set this move it where you want things to be. So in this case I'm going to set it to back here. Um, it's going to be somewhere around here. Here -ish. That's going to be our first hover point. We'll probably try and with six with this one. So I'm going to add one there. Uh, that's at minus five, so I'll just even this up. And that's at minus four, so it makes it easier. Okay, hover point. I'm going to duplicate that one and move that from minus four to four. In fact, I may move this one to six, and then from minus four to four, we'll move one at one. And that means we've got three. One, two, three roughly evenly placed across the model. Um, finally that's at minus five so I'll just duplicate this and copy until it's at five. That means we've got another another batch of hover points. So we've got six hover points there. Um, for this guy we are going to add a seat route up here. We're going to sort of um, ride shotgun on the front. If you have a good sit animation this actually could be a fun one to do but uh, unfortunately apparently I don't in this project. Let's just move that there. This will be our seat. Um, our seat route, uh, right animation. Again, we're just going to use the fly idle. It's not going to be the greatest, greatest animation, but it should be fun. Okay, uh, finally, uh, we don't need to worry about the center of gravity offset. On ground vehicles, you may want to consider lowering it. The further you put it into the ground, the more upright the vehicle is going to be. It's basically going to assume that it's got a pendulum below it which keeps it stable. Um, lots of games use a center of gravity offset to keep their vehicles stable and actually keep them sort of drivable. Um, if you don't want to do that and you want to remain physically accurate and keep with the center of gravity in the center of mass of the colliders then leave that at zero. This is an offset based on the geometric mean of the um, of the various colliders inside the um, inside the vehicle. Um, okay, finally. Now this one's going to have core forces, because this doesn't have wheels, it doesn't have anything else, so it's going to have some magic forces that propel it. Uh, so we're going to go to a forward force, and forward is always the blue line, which is Z, uh, so we're going to move the forward force. This one's going to have 80. I don't, I'm not quite sure how that's going to behave, but again, we'll, we'll have to play with these values and just see what we get. Um, we're going to give it a strafe left and a strafe right force. We're not actually going to have it um, have a left and right force directly. Strafe left and straight Le uh, right are bound to the Q and the E keys. So on a WSAD keyboard, they sort of give you a slightly different uh, one. <coughs> and we're going to give a uh, so straight right will be red arrow. Um, so red gets plus uh, 40, and left might get minus 40. And that means those those keys will get push that force onto it. It'll be relative to the the uh, the vehicle's local axis as well. It's not relative to the world. Um, if that's not not obvious. Um, finally, the last one we will add is a rotational force. And we'll start add a rotational Y force. And that means that the A and D keys, or the left and right arrow keys, will actually give it a bit of torque, twisting it along the central axis. Um, so we'll give that one a torque of 100. Not quite sure how much these values are going to make, but uh, first things first, we'll drop a hover point in. So the hover points, um, when we define these, uh, basically they shoot probes out uh, from them and they shoot in the axis you specify. So if we look in the hover points we've actually got a, a force direction. Um, so we're going to set the force direction to minus one in world space and that means that it's going to go all, the opposite of the green. Green would be one, um, the opposite of there, so it's actually going to shoot to the ground. And as the probe, um, the probe will travel up to max distance. We're going to set this to a max distance to ten and depending on the uh, the position between 0 and 10 it actually hits, it'll apply either minimum force or maximum force to the vehicle at that point. Um, 
uh, so basically it's the equivalent of sort of something blowing on it at that point. Um, and the, the amount of force it, it exerts on the object will be determinate um, by these values here. Uh, again, this is in Newton meters. Uh, everything we do, it will be in whatever the appropriate SI unit is, um, just for reference. Uh, so if you've got any familiar with the SI units scales and how they interact with vehicles and things, this system has been built to be as accurate as we can so that you can sort of model these things. Um, externally or go look up values. Now in the case of this kind of vehicle you're not going to be able to do that but um, you can do, do that here. The force scale needs to be at least one um, or at least not zero uh, and that will multiply on these values so you can actually sort of play with them more easily than having to edit both values at once. So we're going to set the minimum force on this one to zero. I'm going to set the maximum force to 500 and hopefully that's enough to keep this thing aloft. It might not be. We might actually need to go to 5000 um, but we'll, we'll play around with this. In a second, I'm just going to repeat this uh, a couple of times. So we've got our hover points there. We've got six hover points in total. Um, so I'm just going to copy and swap the hover points. So one, one for one, two for two, three for three, four for four, and five for five. Okay. So this one should now be sending out probes at those positions, and we are good to go, I think. Oh no, we need to have a camera. So is that our virtual camera again? So, and let's turn our create our main camera back. Let's go to our brain. camera and we're going to again set this as the focus and what it's going to follow um, okay and finally we're just going to set up these composers and I'm not going to do such a, a fancy job this time it's going to be a very very basic uh, um, so we're going to set the track to off offset so it's going to be in the middle of the object and we're going to set you up to there and we're going to set you a little bit further away we still don't want this to feel big though and so we'll around these settings a little bit. Okay, there we go. That's our, our little fun, fun vehicle. I'll just set this one priority up to 10,000. We disable it just so it doesn't immediately take over the camera when you've got it um, resed. And finally we just drop this into the, um, the camera slot. And with a bit of luck we have got this working. Now, um, tweaking these values on the hover cars can be a bit harder than tweaking the other ones, so it may take some time. So if I'm, unfortunately, I'm just about done, out of time. Um, so if we don't get this uh, this one working, I'll post the, the notes later on how to do it. Oh, we made one very fatal mistake here, and that's forgetting to attach a collider. Uh, so we'll just grab them. here. We'll just add the collider to this one. So the uh, mesh collider. Again, convex. And that should hopefully Okay, so our, our vehicle works, but it's a bit, a bit heavy. Um, so we'll start playing with some of these values and, and get the um, the forces right. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is we'll just uh, increase the scale. So I'll try to no, that may not be enough. This is, is a big, big vehicle after all. Well, we got some lift. You can sort of see it's beginning to beginning to lurch a little bit at the, the bottom here. Um, well, maybe set this a bit a bit high. Um, we might want to consider for these kinds of vehicles, you may want to consider an upright stability. Thing, and that'll apply a bit of force to it to try and push it back to <laughs> uh, some some tuning is going to be required to get this guy to behave but uh, let's see what we can do very very quickly um, see if we can sort of so that 55 is a bit too much let's set this to 25 oh and it doesn't wasn't even anyway uh, 25 25 
We fire has Okay. Whoop. We're almost there. Let's see. Maybe ten. Again, we'll just uh, advance through a few frames just to see what's happening. So now we're getting a bit bits of a uh, bit of movement. Um, what I might do is I might also just increase the, the angular drag. This is called cheating. Uh, so if you're, you're having this rotational stability problems, what we can do is we can just say, okay, we're going to move the angular drag. So now it's not going to rotate as quickly either. Should be a big lumbering vehicle. Um, there we go. Now we're beginning to get somewhere. It's a little, still a little bit strong, but uh, we're coming close to getting what we want. Oops. That should be 10. Editing the wrong, uh, wrong value. Okay, that should be 5. Let's try 5. 5. 5. 5. And 5. Hey, okay, so we're beginning to get something. Okay, now a rotational torque is not enough. And our forward torque isn't enough. That's uh, so a straight thousand. I think that seems to be about what we need. When we're in the thousands on this vehicle. Uh, I should just do this instead of my office hours. This is actually a lot of fun. Not quite right, but uh, we're getting there. So we can slowly move. Uh, maybe my torque needs to be even stronger. Yes, now we can move. So now we can twist and, and drive the, the vehicle around. Uh, just our forward forces are not enough. So there we go. Uh, this is our, our very, very basic basic hover tank, but um, I may even move that up to... This is where we add lots of zeros. Now it's beginning to, beginning to limber forward. And what we might want to do is actually lower the, the velocity drag a little bit. I think that might be moving a bit... moving it a bit... Uh, clamping it a little bit too much. Here we go. So, you want to build a, uh, a hover tank? That's how. Alright, um, thank you guys all for watching. I'm going to start doing my office hours now. Um, hopefully you learned at least a, a little bit um, on how to make how to make vehicles with the modular vehicle framework. Um, uh, as usual, if you've got any particular questions on things, on how this, how this all should work, um, feel free to ask me. Um, I also do respond in the forums as well. Uh, so if you've got particular questions and I'm not in the right time zone, uh, please feel free to post them there. Um, next week I have not quite decided the, the theme and topic for uh, what our masterclass will be, but uh, hopefully it will be something as entertaining as this. Alright, see you guys in a bit.